Dustin, Glenn, Joe, um, McElhone. Do I Bob have a Conforti. Oh, Bob, Bob Conforti. Okay. Yeah, I'm on the Thank phone, you. Eleanor. Um, Darlene Battle, yep. also on the Fair. phone. Good. All right. Then um, Doug Benedetto is the only one that is not signed in yet. Um, but it is 6.30, so I am going to go ahead and call the meeting to um, order, okay? Good. So, um, for the record, we are recording. Um, for the record, today is Wednesday, June 3rd. This is a regular meeting of the Board of Public Safety. Um, and we'll jump right into this agenda. Item number one, I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the regular meeting held May 6th of 2020. Bingo moves. Thank second. You. So motion made by Commissioner Bingham, seconded by Commissioner Conforti. Are there any questions or comments on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item two on the agenda is, um, I'm sorry, um, item two on the agenda is a discussion um, and potential vote to increase the number of sergeants within the Torrington Police Department from 13 to 14. I put effective immediately, and I'm going to turn this over to um, Chief Baldwin to talk a little bit about um, how this will um, assist in more efficiently um, and effectively managing some of the divisions within the police department. So you're all set, Chief? Yes, Commissioner. Uh, thank you for being here this evening. We're, um, I, I've uh, asked to uh, talk to the mayor, um, and I want to um, propose adding uh, an additional sergeant to my ranks. Um, as you know, um, uh, one of my, my traffic officers, Steve Pizarski, um, is uh, preparing to retire at the end of this year. Um, the traffic division is an extremely important division within um, uh, our department. Um, it, uh, Steve has been there for approximately, he'll be approximately nine years that he's been in there. Prior to him, um, Bob Shopey had been in there for uh, approximately 18 years. Uh, and before Bob, uh, we go back to Dominic Petrofesa, who was the, uh, the traffic officer. So that traffic division um, has, uh, hasn't, um, has had three officers over, over the last probably 30 years. When I first started in the police department, uh, Dominic was the traffic officer back then. Um, throughout, uh, as I uh, looked at the, um, as I went through the history and talked to my guys about the history of the traffic division, there had been um, uh, talks of uh, making the traffic position a sergeant. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, Officer Shopey, uh, there was a proposal to, to, to make him a sergeant back in the day. And um, I'm not too sure about Pizar uh, Officer Pizarski, but I believe um, that was also a, a proposal to make. The reason why um, I feel um, that uh, the, the um, traffic division deserves and needs a sergeant um, is because of the significant work that the traffic division um, does for the city of Torrington and for the police department. It is, it is without a doubt, a supervisory position. Um, and uh, the traffic officer is, is responsible for six civilians, which includes uh, clerical, which includes um, our, our parking authority and uh, our, our parking enforcement officer. It includes our two electricians that we have uh, that uh, deal with our traffic lights on a, a regular basis. And it includes our two traffic maintainers. Uh, not only that, our traffic officer is responsible for uh, ensuring that um, all of the uh, highway, the, the road construction jobs um, or, or highway construction jobs are filled. He has to be in touch with contractors. He has to attend meetings uh, with the uh, planning and zoning. He has to deal with um, uh, the um, uh, state DOT. Um, the traffic department, as you well know, and as we have discussed, uh, has its own budget. Um, he's responsible for the budget. He's responsible for grants. Uh, and uh, he's responsible for uh, a myriad of other uh, responsibilities uh, within that division. I just feel that now, um, as um, I became chief, um, I I've indicated to the board, to the mayor, that it was going to take me um, a good year, year and a half, to possibly two years, uh, to kind of get a feel for the things that are going on within my department and what I feel as though I need for changes um, and what I need to make uh, my department run uh, efficiently and smoothly. And I think that at this point, um, as I look at the um, at, at my my rank structure, 
Um, I'm, I'm filling in um, the positions where I think are, what I think are critical um, to um, the smooth and, and uh, continuous uh, operation department. Um, the uh, uh, traffic division position, um, I believe, and upon uh, consultation with my, um, command, my uh, commanding officers, they agree as well that the traffic division should um, be and warrants the position and rank of sergeant. Not only that, um, as I indicated um, when I first started, one of my goals within the department was to uh, develop succession planning, to develop opportunities amongst the patrol force, to develop uh, the ability for, for individuals to strive for and to achieve uh, rank within the department and to eventually go up the chain uh, and become um, uh, commanding officers. And um, Commissioner McLeod, we, we're, we're hoping a deputy chief someday, right, sir? So, um, the, so uh, the thing is, is um, I, I, I'm, I, I'm looking to uh, ensure that there's a succession planning within the department and it starts at the sergeant's rank. Uh, it starts at the sergeant's level. So my sergeants are all, um, they're, they're flat out. Uh, my administrative sergeant is flat out. Uh, my uh, patrol sergeants are flat out. And honestly, I don't think that putting a, uh, a patrolman in this position at this time uh, would, would be effective. Um, so uh, I am requesting um, on uh, behalf of the department and on behalf of the track division that you authorize me um, to increase my sergeant's rank to my sergeant's uh, level from 13 to 14. Uh, a cost estimate of that is approximately $10,400 in salary. Uh, so that would be um, within my uh, wage line item, which, would, uh, which we can absorb uh, in this, uh, during this budget time. So um, if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to take them. Chief, Commissioner Conforti, um, I know we've had a conversation before and you know how I feel about the uh, deputy chief position being eliminated. But could I ask you just a question on the, the responsibility of the sergeant that's gonna be in charge? Was, the, was any of that put on your shoulders or were some of the rank, the other staff picking up the slack to try to cover what we feel we need? So, uh, that some of the other staff had to pick up on, on the traffic division. Um, I've in, I had to increase and uh, I believe uh, rightly uh, added a additional administrative sergeant within, the, um, within my uh, administrative side of the shop to oversee and to deal with the traffic division. Um, he has got a, a myriad of other duties that he has to take care of and the other things that he has to deal with. Um, in addition to overseeing the traffic division. Um, so this is going to, you know, once the sergeant is in there, he will be responsible to or report to uh, the lieutenant and then ultimately uh, the captain of support services. Um, so it's gonna free up my, um, my sergeant who's taking on these duties now, who's overseeing, uh, let, let, let me be honest, with Steve Pizarski in that position, um, my traffic division runs as smooth as silk. Um, the, the, the gentleman, and I think all of you on this, on this uh, call uh, who know Steve, knows that he is a wealth of knowledge. He's a no-nonsense type of guy. Um, he's the type of guy that I am going to be, I think we are going to seriously feel his loss uh, upon his retirement. Um, and the position for, uh, the traffic position has to be a commit, a long-term committed position. Uh, it can't be um, somebody that's going to go in there for a year or two and then decide that he's going to move forward uh, to, to a different position or, or move out of that. So um, I'm looking to fill this in for, for a long-term position. Uh, and generally, the, P, the officers, based on the history that I've given you, have, have stayed in this position uh, right, up on, right up until and through their retirement, uh, which, was, um, uh, which is extremely important. My goal also is as I build my staff, uh, would be to eventually put an officer in the traffic division um, so that I can have um, a sergeant and an officer dealing with this issue. I could tell you that that traffic division, when you look at other cities or towns our size, the traffic divisions uh, are, are manned by um, several individuals, uh, not just one person. And we're very fortunate in, with Steve's knowledge and his uh, expertise in this field. I think um, you know, we've been very fortunate to be able to, to, to have him uh, run this office uh, as, as best as, as it can. So. I know that's a long-winded answer, Commissioner, but uh, quite frankly, um, it would free up my one of my administrative sergeants to be able to focus on other issues within the department that I feel are important. 
Chief, I, I, I wasn't questioning the, um, the, the, the moving somebody into that position. I was just hoping that some of the strain would come off of your back. And you know how I feel about the deputy chief position not being there because we do need that succession process. We do need be able we do need to be able to hold officers, not hold officers, but keep officers in our system, knowing that there's a possibility that they're going to get promoted to a different position, and so on and so on. So by eliminating by not having those positions, there's the possibility that we could keep losing officers to other departments that have that succession program. So no, I'm I'm totally for it. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner McLeod, I think you're muted. Are you trying to talk? You're muted. Huh. Uh, this is uh, Dustin Bing. I have a question, Chief. How's that? Oh. Uh, who first? Uh, Go McLeod? ahead, Commissioner Bingham. I, he jumped in while Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, no, just a simple question. You talked about the longevity of keeping somebody who is going to be in there from for a long period of time. There's no way of holding somebody to commit to say, I'm going to be in there for five, 10, whatever years. Do you just do that based upon your best estimations from the potential candidates? Commissioner, there's no question that um, individuals can get bird foul and there can be a, a, a situation where that individual may want to transfer out of that position or may want to leave, uh, leave to another position. So that is accurate. Um, the, I, I think, or I could tell you, uh, I, I would be, um, a, as I advertise this position, uh, I think there's a lot of interest in this position and obviously I'm going to be looking for the right person and the right fit and I'm going to hopefully get a long term commitment from that individual. Um, uh, and and that's, that's going to drive my decision to uh, who I put into that position. But yeah, quite honestly, I mean, you know, I can't handcuff the guy, no pun intended, uh, to the desk uh, and say that he's going to be in there for the, for the re remainder of his career. Because you're, you're, you're correct, the Commissioner Conforti's point, um, he very well may want to uh, advance in rank. Um, so that is a possibility. Um, but uh, I think for um, the short term and my hope for the long term is to ensure that there is longevity in this position uh, for, um, for, for, the, um, um, for the sergeant. Thank you. Commissioner McLeod. Okay, Chief, I, I, I just want to ask you a quick question. Uh, listening to what you're saying about um, dedicating a sergeant to, to this position um, and talking about working with the contractors that work in the city and, and, and that type of thing. If someone's dedicated to that position for most of their job and everything, couldn't they, I mean, we never know for sure, but couldn't they really, they could make us money. I mean, that $10,000 we're talking about in salary, if that position is done correctly and, you know, somebody, somebody has that position and that's, that's, they're the authority to do all that, couldn't they really make up that $10,000 without even thinking about it over the course of a year? Well, there's no question that the traffic division, and I, I believe I've reported on this on past uh, meetings, that the traffic division does, in fact, bring in revenue into the city of Torrington. And I think this was one of the things that we spoke about on the, uh, with uh, the meter revenue. Um, but that's, that, that's a small part of it. The other part, obviously, as you said, sir, is the, is the construction aspect of it, the extra duty jobs. Um, that, uh, that brings in, uh, and, and, and we also, and um, you know, we also bring in uh, revenue uh, for the cruisers that are going on these construction jobs. Um, and uh, our, our last uh, reported estimate was somewhere, uh, uh, was over the $100,000 mark that we brought in revenue as a result of the extra duty job. So, so yes, I mean, there, there is, um, there is a, a, a strong potential uh, to increase the amount of monies that are coming into our city as a result of an efficient uh, traffic uh, enforcement um, leader in that position. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I, there's a little bit of a reverb, so I'm trying to reduce how many people are um, have live mics. Um, are there any other um, board members that have a question? I'm not seeing any raised hands or... <laughs> okay, so then um, based on 
sorry about that. So based on, um, on the agenda item um, as, it is, as it stands, if the board is um, willing to entertain a motion, the motion we would be looking for is uh, to approve the increase of the um, number of sergeants within the Torrington Police Department um, ranks from its current status of 13 to 14. And that would be effective uh, immediately or as soon as um, the chief is ready to fill the position um, in light of um, the need to start thinking about what that traffic division is going to be. So do I have a motion? I I'd like to make the motion there to increase it from 13 to 14. Okay, that sounded like Commissioner Conforti. Conforti, do I have a second? Yes. Second. second. Thank you. I heard um, Commissioner McElroy. Um, any discussion or questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Then that motion carries. Great, thank you. Um, we're going to jump right into item three. I know these are truncated um, um, agendas. Um, but um, until we're able to actually sit in a room and have um, a really um, free-flowing dialogue, I think these agendas will still get you any questions or comments you may, you may need. Um, so item number three, I'll entertain a motion to consider business by the volunteer fire departments. So moved. So moved. I, I saw Glenn McLeod, uh, Commissioner yeah. McLeod um, frame light up and I think I heard Commissioner yeah. Forty. Um, yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right. So volunteer fire departments. Hey, you guys, I think if you're on the phone, I don't recognize your phone numbers. Do you want to unmute yourselves and just identify yourselves? Do we have any volunteers? Going once. All right. If there are no volunteer fire departments on the line with us, um, we'll move into item number four. I'll entertain a motion to consider business by department heads. So move. So move, Mayor. I, I heard Commissioner Battle and I heard Commissioner Conforti. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Then we'll um, jump in. Um, Chief Baldwin, you sort of still have the floor. Is there anything else you wanted to bring up this evening? Yes, Mayor. Um, we, uh, on a, on a side note from uh, the traffic, as we talked about the traffic division, um, I've had discussions with the mayor and um, I would like to, uh, I'm going, we, we spoke about this at, um, I'm not quite sure which meeting it was, probably about two, two months ago, two, three months ago, um, about the administrative fees um, concerning um, our construction, our highway construction um, costs. Uh, Commissioner McLeod, to your point about reven revenue being generated uh, for the city. Right now, the city of Torrington charges an exorbitantly low administrative fee for um, uh, construction jobs at the, I believe it's 5%. Um, most communities um, are, some communities are charging uh, a, a higher hour, hourly rate uh, for an administrative fee and most communities are charging anywhere between uh, 15 to 35% administrative fee. Uh, we've maintained and held this 5% uh, uh, administrative fee for, uh, for many, many years. Uh, Officer Pizarski has indicated that he's never seen it uh, go up um, uh, in his time, and that's so it's at least nine years. Uh, I think it's time that um, we uh, increase that administrative fee uh, for our construction, um, uh, for, our, for, for the work that's associated with our construction companies, um, which, is, um, which is just coming in line with um, our, um, uh, you know, coming in line with all of the other communities in the towns uh, who charge that same fee. Uh, the other uh, issue that I um, want to talk about as well is the, uh, um, wanna, the most of the police department community, most of the cities uh, within our state have a, uh, a mutual agreement amongst uh, other, um, uh, depart other cities and departments uh, for unfilled construction jobs where, uh, again, to leave a construction job unfilled, number one, obviously, would be a safety issue of um, if, in if, in fact, an officer is needed and we can't fill that position. And the second um, uh, part of that is that it uh, 
it, it eliminates revenue being generated by the city. If we don't have an officer there, we can't collect, we don't collect those administrative fees. Um, I've uh, spoken to other chiefs within um, the state. Uh, I've uh, received um, several uh, MOUs that have been developed um, and uh, I would, I, I wanna discuss, I'll, I'll, I guess we'll, we'll put this in the form um, I'm not sure how, how you know how, how this would go, but I I will discuss this with the mayor, uh, our corporation council, um, to uh, to enter into agreements as it relates to um, highway construction projects or, or extra duty jobs uh, within our city, within our community. So the floor is open for discussion or questions to the chief on this. I know this is another topic that the chief and I spoke about, um, and I don't mind sharing with you the morning that he. Raises actually, this is the second or third time that has come to um, to a discussion. Um, as I was driving into work, there was a little construction that was occurring on Church Street, um, you know, and there wasn't um, a flagman at that site. Um, fortunately, it was in an area where the road was pretty wide, and I can get around it pretty quickly and easily. But those are the kinds of situations I think the chief is trying to um, address to make sure that there's um, there's coverage. So um, the floor is open if there's anybody that wanted to um, to speak. Chief, what did you say our, our percentage was for getting 3%? No, right now it's I mean, five, what we're paying? It's, it's 5%? Sir, if, if Eversource is out um, um, putting in gas lines, the administrative fee is 5%. We, we're not gonna change the city administrative fee. There is an administrative, administrative fee that is charged to the city departments, which is a 3%. We're obviously gonna, right. main, we're gonna maintain that rate, but as it relates to outside construction companies, um, we would increase that, uh, that rate. And I, I um, you know, we've had discussions as to what that rate would be, what would be a fair rate. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how I would go about um, getting authorization for that. I don't know if that has to be in, in the form of an agenda item or, or not, Mayor. I, I'm, again, this is just discussion. Yeah, and I well, would I say um, those are management. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, um, Commissioner. Um, to answer the chief's question, I know that this has come up a few times. I think those are management decisions, um, but um, Board of Finance should be providing guidance. I always say this is the board that develops policies, um, and those policies really are just, um, you know, the you know the the framework, and within that framework, um, our chiefs should be able to run their departments um, that meet those policy guidelines. So. Did you Chief, I, Chief, I have a question for you, if I may. Um, I get I get questioned a lot by by the local taxpayers or whatever um, in regards to why do we have police officers on some jobs, or why don't we have some on some jobs? How are we How are we compared to most cities? I guess maybe the same size as us, so far as what our requirements are. Uh, whether you can use just a flag or, or whether you have to use the police department or the like. I mean, I went through this for years with AT&T when we had jobs, you know, in, in the middle of the street. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for what you're talking about, but I'm just kind of curious on how we stand, you know, regionally or city-wise on, on our local requirements. Because sometimes, I mean, I've driven by someplace and go, why do we have a cruiser here? Yeah, I mean, it, but I don't know the specific requirements on that. We're, we're pretty comparable to what other cities and towns do. Uh, generally, um, again, this is going to be another important factor of why we're going to put a sergeant, why I want to want, we're putting a sergeant into the traffic division is because they're going to be able to identify those road jobs um, that absolutely need an officer. Basically, it has to do with, with um, you know, the, the amount of traffic. Uh, the amount of any type of pedestrians that might be in the area it's 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 basically it surrounds everything that has to do with safety some dead end road um at the at the end of a cul-de-sac where they're digging up a trench uh does not need an officer an officer standing there um there may be other reasons that uh the the officer may be there there are some construction companies that have policies to hire officers as opposed to uh flagmen or um, other traffic control um, but um, there is no, uh, it, it's generally a, a dialogue that occurs between the traffic department and the construction company 
to determine whether or not an officer is needed. Generally, obviously, uh, 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 when there, there's construction on East Main Street, you need, an, you need one or two officers because of the amount of traffic in there. Um, so, so these are some of the varying factors that, uh, that drive that. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bingham here, Chief. Uh, following that similar question, uh, this weekend over on Kennedy, there was some, I don't know if it was construction or if an accident occurred, but it seemed like all the inlets and outlets going onto Kennedy were, you weren't able to get up and down Kennedy in the end. Whether you were coming off of Route 8 North, you took a ride up to Kennedy, there was no way around that unless you turned around. Um, I, my wife and I ran into it as we were driving around, so I wasn't sure if there was going to be a flagger or further signs out there saying that the road was going to be closed off. Um, are you aware of that situation? There was an accident over the weekend, Commissioner, if this is the one that you're speaking about, Kennedy Drive was closed. Uh, the sergeant made the decision to close uh, Kennedy Drive. At, uh, I believe the Torrington West Street Kennedy Drive intersection as well as the Winston Road uh, Kennedy Drive intersection. Uh, unfortunately, this is a patrol related uh, event. So um, you have a, a couple of officers that respond to do the investigations. You have a couple of officers that uh, do traffic control. Um, and I don't have the manpower or all of the officers uh, to, to shut down those, um, those, um, uh, those intersections where uh, people may be coming into the uh, into Kennedy Drive from such, for example, Albert Park Road or Route 8. Yeah. Uh, that's why you, you would have an officer at the construction site for, the, for those vehicles that would be traveling uh, up, um, up Kennedy Drive or into the traffic area so that they can be turned around. But the but the main uh, um, the main uh, okay. Yeah, if, if the accident had been, well, fortunately, the accident it was a one car accident uh, into a telephone pole, I believe. Um, the uh, it was there were no injuries. Um, generally, those accidents don't take long to investigate. If the accident had been more serious, uh, we would have uh, and we would have uh, solicited the help of to shut down the um, DOT and the, uh, the state police to shut down the exit 45 off ramp uh, and we would have uh, reached out to the street department to shut down uh, the uh, other streets that are coming out to Kennedy Drive. So it really depends upon the situation and it depends upon the, the type of accident that we're dealing with. Thank you. No, I only asked out of concern because I saw a number of cars that were coming up to Kennedy and turning around. So it was probably just due to the timing of when I was coming around that area. Thank you. All right, the floor oh. is still open. Was there um, yes, other? I had a question. Uh, basically, uh, um, when you're talking about con setting the rate or changing the rate, who's who set the first five percent? Who who did that? Was that the board of finance? Was that yeah. that set the rate? It was so long ago. I think that predates all of us. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So then, then it's time to change it. Yeah. yeah, really. Yeah, no, I agree. It's time to change it. I was just w yeah. wondering, okay, if the because if it, that falls under the board of finance, um, do we also have to, as board of public safety, you know, like vote on or have a say in or the last into how much that rate is going to be? I think what the chief is looking for, Commissioner Battle, is um, just um, guidance. Um, mm -hmm. As I said a little bit earlier, I, I look at many of these things as being management decisions, um, okay. especially during a season. Um, mm -hmm. But we obviously wanted to bring it to the Board of um, Safety, um, mostly because it's in context with um, the MOU, you know, finding those, um, that coverage that the chief is looking to provide at these construction sites um, and recognizing that if we're going to be entering into an MOU where there may be somebody from another department, we want to make sure that our administrative fees are sufficient to cover the real administration that it takes to make that happen. Um, so it's really, in, it's, it's a twofold conversation. Um, mm -hmm. but that's where we are. Um, did you have another question or a follow up to that? Okay, so if, so if we enter the uh, the MOU with another um, uh, department and say we have another officer that covers, so then the the rates how does it how does that work? Does that do for 
us, our department, their department? How does it go? The, the department, uh, the department that is uh, that we're hosting, they pay, yeah. the, they pay that officer that whatever their their rate is. And okay, exactly. So and then. It, First of all, this, this, this MOU would, would not negate um, any of our officers from not being the first to get any of these jobs. Um, right. and quite, you know, so our officers would always be first. This would only be in those rare situations where there are several construction jobs going on at the same time. And our town does have uh, numerous construction jobs going on at the same time. And we can't get these officers to fill those positions um, where we would solicit the help of outside um, departments uh, to come in and fill those positions. The other aspect of this is, is that by reaching these MOUs, we would be have the ability to go into their towns uh, when they don't have the ability to fill their positions, and we would collect uh, the, uh, those fees uh, based on, on uh, our, our officers being there. Okay. Chief uh, Doug Benedetto. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Doug. Uh, <laughs> question, um, when an officer gets the same rate if they come into our town, no matter what their rank is? Uh, the officer gets the rate, the rate of pay. Again, the, the, the company is billed for that officer's rate of pay, whatever his rate of pay is from his town. He does so not if he's, get, a, if he's a sergeant or a lieutenant, he comes into town, he's gonna get that lieutenant's pay, correct? Whatever, whatever the arrangement is with their town. If, if, if for example, um, if um, Thomaston has a flat rate, that would be the officer's rate when he comes into our town. If we well, go, if we go into Thomaston, Thomaston, the, the the rate of pay is what our sergeant is making, or whatever our officer is making in, in Thomaston. So they pay okay. our rate, and, and it, it's built to the construction company. Okay, so it doesn't fluctuate. No. Okay, thank you. Other questions from any board members regarding this matter? So um, when the chief and I were speaking about doing this, um, uh, I did ask if there were um, samples of this kind of memorandum of understanding out there. Um, I think the chief was going to do a little um, recon to see what those MOUs look like and then we we're gonna have um, Corporation Council take a look at it um, and move this forward. Um, what we can do is at the July meeting, just report back to you um, what we've been able to accomplish between now and then. Does that make sense, chief? That makes sense to me, yes, sir, ma'am. <laughs> All right, if there aren't any other, is there anything else um, that you wanted to share with the board on any other department matters? Uh, yes, I just, uh, again, um, as we, uh, I, as we witnessed what happened this past week, um, what happened in Minneapolis, um, I've uh, had the opportunity to several individuals. I, I have come out with a public statement uh, that has been that was posted on our Facebook page. Um, we uh, there's been a radio spot that had been done on, on my public statement condemning the actions of that officer um, at the uh, that happened in Minneapolis uh, concerning uh, George Floyd. Um, even more appalling and just as appalling is the fact that those three other officers just stood there uh, or did nothing to intervene on Mr. Floyd's behalf. Um, as a police chief for our town and in our city and in conjunction with and in unison with uh, the Connecticut Chiefs of Police Association, this action and this act has been condemned. Uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us to um, right the wrongs that have been um, done to this individual. Uh, we are uh, working with um, legislatures uh, and with um, different forms and different groups to make change and to affect change as it relates to uh, how we deal with um, uh, uh, these types of incidents uh, in the future. We pray that this doesn't ever happen again. Um, but, uh, you know, the, our, our officers are out there. It, it, this is no question set, set us back uh, as a profession many, many years for all of the times that we have, uh, for, for so much of the time that we have worked so hard to build the trust of our communities, to build the trust of our profession and what we do, this one incident has really um, done significant damage to us. Uh, we um, were fortunate in this community, uh, in the city of Torrington, that uh, we have significant continued support. Um, the police department has uh, continuous support for what we do day in and day out and for what my guys deal with uh, day in and day out. Um, so, um, you know, I just briefly wanted to 
um, go on record and uh, state uh, how um, appalled we were at the, what happened. Um, it was horrific. Uh, that officer deserves the charge that he got. And uh, we were um, law enforcement across this nation, uh, disgusted at what, uh, what we saw with uh, that, that incident in Minneapolis. Also, I can assure you, um, and uh, I've gotten some feedback um, um, from some of my colleagues, those other three officers um, were charged today uh, for that charge. Um, I don't know if they, I know they were going to announce what specifically they were going to be charged with. I haven't gotten that information yet. Um, but the, those other three officers were charged and justly so. I have discussed this with my personnel. Uh, I have, um, through a, a memo format, um, I went to see and, and have talked uh, to some of my guys. Uh, we have um, had some conversations. We had um, uh, some training today uh, at, um, uh, with uh, out at our, our gun range. Um, this is obviously uh, uh, heavy on the hearts of many of our real decent law enforcement officials uh, that have taken place. But the one thing that I emphasize and that I stress is that as officers, we need to, we need to be courageous. We need to take the courage to be able to do what's right, even if, it, even if it's one of our other officers that may be doing something wrong or may be doing something that may violate some type of a, of a civil right or any type of, of wrong, a violation of policy, our officers need to be courageous enough to step in and to admonish and to stop the action of their colleague and that other officer and to report it um, to their supervisor um, so that it can be properly addressed uh, in any manner whatsoever. Um, so um, again, I just uh, again wanted to, uh, myself, the mayor, Commissioner McLeod, um, Chief Towie, we were at the, the rally this, this evening um, at the Co Park. Um, it was an honor to be a part of um, our citizens and, and these groups of people who, who um, were very peaceful, uh, very respectful um, of, uh, of, of um, describing and, um, um, I'm looking for the word, but uh, they were um, just being concerned citizens, recognizing that there, there needs to be change and, and uh, believe me, we recognize it. So um, again, I just uh, uh, wanted to state that uh, it's horrific and it's so sad to see what's going on in our nation uh, today um, as a result of, of, of what happened. And, and uh, I know that um, I continue to get the support of all the members of this board, uh, the mayor, um, this council and, and others uh, who have um, sh uh, shared their support of me and my department and the guys um, that uh, we are all responsible for. And, uh, uh, again, thank you for your support, but uh, understand that uh, we, uh, we, you know, we've got a lot of work moving forward. Amazing what one event can do. Um, it's just it's sad. It really is heartbreaking. Chief, could I, could I just jump in now instead of saving my comments for later? Yes. If I may, no, I, I wanted to thank the mayor and, and yourself and Chief Tawi for, for going down to the rally tonight. Um, I think, I mean, I, my daughter texted me just before our meeting started. I'm so proud of Torrington after tonight down there. It was so peaceful and everything. Unfortunately, and I did just ask somebody, should I tell the chief because I'm on a meeting, um, there are a bunch of trucks parading down there right now a little bit out of control, but I'm also yeah. told that it is under control. So I'm sure you still have a presence down there, but if not, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I guess there's a line of pickup trucks running around, um, kind of a counter, counter protest or whatever. So let's hope, let's hope that doesn't ruin what happened earlier tonight. I agree. But I think this is normal routine that's going on everywhere, unfortunately. I agree. I was wondering if I could see him from my window. <laughs> Yeah, I, and I'm not it's saying they're doing channel, anything wrong. Channel 3 News. Is you know? it? Yes. I was watching it before I came up here yeah. to get away, to talk on the phone. The original, yeah, it's, the original it's just, was on Everything down there, the, the, the rally down at Co Park, everything looked, you know, very peaceful. Um, I didn't know about it. I'm sorry. But, yeah, it's, it was, it just, it was, it's a heart-wrenching thing that happened. And, like, I, I had a conversation with the chief earlier yesterday or today, I think it was yesterday. Um, I did make a comment and said that I don't think this would happen in Torrington. I want to believe it wouldn't happen in Torrington because I feel we have a better, I think we have a system in process. And if we had an officer that had 19 in instances against him, 
I think we would have to address it instead of letting it go. So I want to feel that we have a better, we have a good situation going on in the city of Torrington with the board of safety, the police chief, and what we have in the police department. I agree. Are there any other questions or comments for the chief? Um, we're still in the department head portion of the meeting. Oh, sorry. No, that's fine. Nope. It's just, it's, it's pertinent. Any other comments? All right, then um, let me um, turn this over to Chief Towie for um, any um, updates that you may have, Chief. Before I turn it to Ta Chief Towie, I just want to say how very proud I am of my um, officers and how very proud I know you are of them as well. Um, they continuously stand up to, uh, to meet any challenge that is put before them. And believe me, the times are going to be very challenging for them. Um, but they continue to be above board. They continue to be professional. and um, we have a very good police department and this city, it's a shining star in this, in this city. So I'll turn it over to Chief Tawi. Thank you for your time. Hello everyone. Um, I just would like to start by echoing Chief Baldwin's comments. It was an honor to be down at the rally before this meeting to listen to the, the griefs and the frustrations and, and the speakers. Um, obviously it was a, um, it was a, great event showing um, outreach and a, an indication of the great community that we're in. I um, also want to echo his, his thanks um, for the support of the board, support of the, the community in general. Um, these have been a trying couple months with the COVID um, process. And um, while we've been out there, both the police department, fire department, and all of public safety trying to show support for our our larger, larger community. I also want to acknowledge that the community has been incredibly generous and supportive and, and let the board and, and the larger community know that we really do appreciate those outreaches and those um, thank you cards and letters of support. And uh, that outreach does mean a lot to our guys and it wasn't, wasn't overlooked or, or wasn't forgotten. So, so thank you for, for all of that. Um, the emergency management, we continue to monitor the, the COVID-19 situation and transition things more into a, um, or not transition, but start really focusing down on that long-term recovery. Um, so I do, I do wanna say um, a special thanks to, to my guys and, and the Torrington Police Department. Throughout this process, we've all sort of been thrust into roles that um, were ancillary to our, our primary functions and, and the, the firefighters time and time again have, have stepped up and um, done, done what was asked of them because they saw the, the greater need and, and I, I truly appreciate those efforts. Um, and, and as well as all the city employees, I think throughout the, uh, our entire emergency management team, um, there's a lot of people serving in roles that um, are secondary to their primary function, but they understand the importance and the um, timeliness of, of what needs to occur. Everyone from, you know, economic development to, you know, public works, um, Board of Ed, everyone has really stepped up and, and the community at large is going to be better off coming out of this because of because of their efforts. Um, we're seeing the numbers um, are trending positive, but we do know now is not the time to become complacent. So, you know, we are continuing to advocate for those um, social distancing measures and, and uh, you know, especially within our workforces to make sure that we're keeping that critical workforce going. Um, we are getting to a point where, um, and I think it's, it'll be a good respite, but the, we're, we're sort of having to, we're at a position now where we're able to start um, trying to focus back on the training and equipment and other more fire centric activities that sort of got prioritized off for, um, we prioritize it off because we were focused on COVID. so we are getting back into that training groove knowing that some trainings had gotten pushed off um, for you know, social distancing as well as other um, situations. Um, I, I think I'd echo Chief Baldwin's um, remarks of support for the budgets. Um, you know it's uh, we know it's a tough budget year and we appreciate um, the support for the budgets and uh, you know, we we are we will be good fiduciaries of that funding and make sure that it's um 
continuing to move and progress our departments to make sure that we're serving the community to the highest level possible. So um, that, I thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Are there questions for the Chief before I let him out of the hot seat? <laughs> Nope. 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 All right. Then, um, Deputy Chief uh, Tripp, anything that you needed to add this evening? Updates? Sure. Any of that stuff? Yes, Mayor, if I may. Uh, just to, to echo with the Chief, uh, first I want to thank our guys uh, during some of these drives that we've been having. We've had some logistical Murphy bleeps show up and we had to do like a last minute call for the day shift to come up in Belo Sao and a couple of times they have. So I want to thank them and commend them uh, for stepping up and help us out with that. Um, and also the CERT volunteers. Uh, we've asked a lot of CERT. Um, I, I think a lot of the CERT people that we're getting are excited to be activated and participating. Um, but we've asked them, you know, they're starting to stretch pretty thin. Some are getting back to work now. Um, but I really want to commend the CERT and, a few of the, you know, the board of ed members that actually went through a CERT training um, and some of them actually got sucked into being really active with the CERT, which is a good thing. So uh, I just really want to condemn, I mean, commend on, on the CERT volunteers that have been really helping us out. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Any questions for Deputy Chief Tripp? All right, then we will... Um, move into if we can item number five um i'll entertain a motion to consider business by the mayor and members of the board of safety so so mayor. thank you i heard a lot of familiar voices glenn mcleod <laughs> um, and i yes. heard a second from uh commissioner um McElroy. so uh, all in favor aye. Aye. aye all right we're um open and let me start with um commissioner um Bingham. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to thank the Chiefs and everybody for trying to keep everything at bay. So, I mean, I've heard constant feedback from the community of just what's going on with Torrington, what's the response on that side, and I haven't heard anything but positives on everybody. So, uh, regarding the COVID stuff, regarding the George Floyd situation, it, everything's been good. So, I just wanted to thank you all for that. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner McElroy. Yeah, I'd just like to say uh, thank you to the first responders also. Um, obviously, um, I feel that um, Torrington's very blessed to have the uh, police and fire department and the uh, EMS service that we do because they're very professional and they handle on a, a big call load and dealing with it very professional. So I'm always proud of that. Hey, thank you. As I break my printer. Um, Commissioner Benedict. Yes, good evening. Um, uh, Chief Baldwin, are you still with us? Hi, Chief. I, um, you know, I, I missed the first part. I was muted. Maybe that was on purpose, but who knows? <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, I, I do agree. I, I heard it because I was on my cell phone, but I couldn't talk or vote. Um, I do agree with you. You need some kind of um, supervisor in that traffic division because we've had had problems in the past. And, but on the other hand, I, I think we need help in that department. I think Steve Pizarski is, is, he does a great job, but he needs some help in there. And um, are you looking at moving another officer in there uh, soon? Or what's your, what's your plan? My, my plan at this point, uh, Commissioner, is that um, it, uh, one of the things that I had mentioned um, uh, when I was discussing my reasoning behind that is, is that when I get up to full staff, uh, that is going to be one of my goals is to eventually put an officer into that uh, position to work with that sergeant so that I would have uh, an additional officer in there. Um, you know, I, th there's other needs within my department as well, uh, mm -hmm. as personnel is concerned. Um, so that is uh, absolutely a goal of mine to uh, in include another officer to uh, potentially uh, take that, you know, take the reins of, um, of, of the new, whoever the new person is going to be. Uh, there's so much to learn in that division uh, that we're going to, we're, we're working, I'm working with my command staff uh, to uh, put 
uh, an individual in that position now um, to shadow Officer Pizarski and to get to learn uh, this, um, uh, you know, this, this this pretty important role. Uh, it's gonna. I mean, he he's he's done by the end of the year, um, and uh, yeah. there, he's got a wealth of knowledge, and there's going to be an, a, a, a significant learning curve um, in this training that uh, is going to be, uh, be taking place within the division. Mm -hmm. and, and Chief, as a sergeant in that, in the traffic division, is he going to have more duties to oversee more people than to get his work done? Because I know Steve was pretty strapped on time. Yeah, no, he, he's still going to be, no, the sar he, he's going to be, unfortunately, Commissioner, uh, he's going to be doing it all. Uh, at, for, for the time being, he will be doing uh, all of, all the work uh, that uh, in, envelops and entails uh, that position uh, within the traffic division. Uh, fortunately, um, I have a uh, an additional administrative sergeant that will be able to give um, him a hand, but that administrative sergeant is going to be busy dealing with other issues as well. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be added duties to that position now that he's a sergeant? No, the, 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 well, the, the fact that he is going to be heading a, he's going to be supervising and, and basically heading a division uh, with the police department, um, that is the purpose for uh, the ranks, the, for the change in rank structure, to ensure that there's a sergeant there. Because yes, he will be supervising six civilians, so he's going to be supervising, um, uh, um, yeah, he'll be supervising six, six civilians and um, dealing with all of the issues uh, um, associated with uh, with the traffic department, and then keep up with his normal duties. Well, that and no. and keep up with his normal duties. Yeah, yes. I, I, that those will be his normal, that those will be part of his normal duties. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I was just curious about that and the manpower. Right. I didn't know if he was, was going to have added duties put towards him. You know. Right. Okay. Thank you, uh, Chief Towie. Yep. I just like to talk about lockouts. You know, I've, I've seen a couple of them, just happened to be in the area. Um, and what I'm seeing is an engine with um, the fly car to give them a hand. Uh, you know, some of these I see people know how to play the, the system. You know, you talk about the YMCA um, and we have to go over there because they know how to play the system. They say their medications in, in the room and then the lieutenant or one of firefighters will ask them, well, what, what medication? And they don't have an answer for them. So is it necessary for us to be doing these kind of calls and taking away from, you know, potential emergency? And is it their job to open the YMCA's door? I mean, I think there's always going to be situations where people can, you know, quote unquote, game the system. Um, I mean, I think that's the nature, nature of our business. Um, I do think that's a service that if there's a, a health and safety consideration, um, I know we are always gonna err on the side of, of caution um, to make sure that we're addressing that because we definitely do not want to end up being on the, the wrong side of that. We can, we can look at the, the past responses and, and, and sort of get a, get a look on that. Um, you know, I will say calls like that, um, they're service calls so that if there was a situation that there was an immediate emergency, um, depending upon the situation, they still would be available to respond if there was a, a secondary fire or secondary incident that came in. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have any feedback and it, anecdotally, it doesn't seem like those responses are having an impact on our immediate emergency um, response as it comes in but we could definitely look into that further yeah i just think to roll you know five guys to unlock an apartment door that somebody came out and they locked themselves out of i don't think it's a fire department's job you know it's it they know how to play the system and they're using our system and we're rolling an eight hundred thousand dollar truck to unlock a door soon they have somebody at the y and the towers to to unlock the door with a master key Call, can't you call somebody? Why is it the Torrington Fire Department's duty? Uh, you can look into that more, Commissioner. I know, you know, sometimes it'll, you'll get the call of food on the stove and you go in there, you know, um, there may be, you know, if we get a report of a hazardous situation, then we obviously have to 
ensure that it's not present. Um, now, do you track uh, if there's repeat offenders? I'm sorry, what? Do you repeat, uh, do you track if there's repeat offenders that get locked out? Yeah, I don't have any data on that right now for you, Commissioner. Okay. All right. You still have the floor, Commissioner Benedetto. Is there any, anything else you wanted to add this evening? Since we muted you for the first half of the meeting? <laughs> I think he's frozen <laughs> or fell asleep. <laughs> All right, let's turn this over to um, Commissioner Conforti. Well, we were all muted in the beginning because I had to start six to be able to speak. So it told me that yeah, when, I, uh, when I signed in. But um, I just want to thank, you know, I'm not going to go into the, all this stuff that's going on in the country right now or, you know, just keep beating things over the head with, uh, you know, what's going on with the fire department and police department. I just want to thank both, all three of you, the, the mayor, the fire chief, and the police chief, because I think we have a phenomenal team that's running the city of Torrington. I have the utmost respect for all three of you. Um, I talked to whoever I can when I can. And it's just, it's, it's just been really, you know, I know it's a trying time for the country right now. Um, that rally we had down at Torrington, I was watching it on, um, on TV and it seemed very peaceful. Uh, the ones on TV are a little out of control, but it's just, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of what we have in, in the city and I'm happy to represent it. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner McLeod. Yeah, I mean, I'll re reiterate everything that everybody said about our departments. Um, and I think I pretty much said that every single meeting. And it's uh, well-deserved every, every, every single meeting. Um, I, I did have just one, one quick question for um, Chief Baldwin. Um, it, pretty simple question. Do, do, are we going to have to test again um, to get a new sergeant promoted or... Uh, are there still people in the pipeline from the last time we tested or, and, and, and either way, do you feel you have a lot of people, patrolmen or not, uh, that are interested and will take the test for, uh, for sergeant? Really? Because as much as you like to pick somebody, you know, I, I still always have my union hat on. As much as you like to pick somebody to make this promotion, it's not quite that simple. Um, you know, there's a process to go through and, you know, you may have to shuffle at some point, shuffle all your sergeants, you know, to get them in the right position, which I trust you to do that. But I'm just kind of curious if there is a desire um, from a lot of the patrolmen down there or patrol women, whatever, to um, become sergeants. Yes, th there is a desire. It is a desired rank. Um, uh, it's the most important rank in any police department is your frontline, first line supervisor. Um, I do have uh, the sergeant's list is still active. Uh, there is one more person in that uh, in that uh, top three uh, by union contract uh, that is eligible for that position. Um, so uh, right now, this this list will I believe it, it goes through um, close to the end of the year, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't I can get you the exact date as to when this list expires, but it is still currently active. Uh, once once okay. this expires. Um, we will uh, will re-advertise, and there will be um, there will be significant issue, significant interest uh, in this rank, in this position. Okay, okay. I mean, but when we when we we had the motion before, that was that that motion was to, I believe, to authorize this immediately. If I'm not mistaken, Mayor, isn't it to do this immediately? Add add this add the additional sergeant. The the, um, well, yeah, that was the plan. Yes. I okay. So, so, so really the person on that list is the person that will be promoted. Yes. I, I'm, we're not, which, which I don't have a problem with probably, but I'm just, I'm just kind of curious on the process there. Yeah, we're not, I, I'm not quite there to make the promotion, um, but there, there will be a promotion. I'm going to make them the, the uh, we're going to advertise um, through the, uh, um, as a result of the, the, the union contract, we will advertise for the, the sergeant's position in the traffic division. 
uh, once um, uh, once that's uh, been um, taken care of, we will bring a promotion before the Board of Safety. Okay, but but I, I'm missing something here. But if they, if we already have a list and there's only one person on it, I, I doesn't that person have to get the job? Yeah, they're, they're, and, and why why do you have to advertise it? That that's the only reason. I'm just not sure of the process. No, I'm advertising the traffic division's position um, because by contract that is it's a special assignment, um, okay. and that by contract that has to be advertised. So sergeants have to uh, interested personnel sergeants will will put in for that position, and then there will be a process to uh, put that uh, person based on qualifications into that into that position. So I'll make okay. that. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace that sergeant that's going into the traffic division because that will okay. be Okay. Yeah, I misunderstood that. So you have to post that for to let any sergeant that is currently on the force put in for that job. Correct. Okay. Okay. I missed that. Okay. Thank you. I'm good, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Battle. Yes, I, I also wanted to um, echo everyone else uh, to thank the chief. Um, and just the whole uh, public safety group for the work they've been doing um, during the COVID situation. Um, I also feel that um, in Torrington, we have a very good um, public safety uh, department group, and um, especially as, as we're dealing with the situation that's going on in the country, and I also uh, feel as though I I really don't feel that that would be an issue here, um, but I do thank um, everyone for the, the work that they do, for um, being out in the community, for responding to um, people's concerns. Um, you know, it has come before me, and I uh, just really um, appreciate the work that you do, and. Uh, I just wanted you to know that. Thank you, commissioners. Um, I'm just gonna um, put out there that um, based on um, Board of Finance's um, decision last night regarding our mill rate um, and the budget setting, um, I've met with the chiefs and um, I, I am I'm confident that any of the additional funds that I need to um, seek to close out and balance our budget will not impact either of these department budgets. Um, I think this is um, an, uh, a sentiment that I heard very strongly from this board. So I'm gonna to try to respect you know, your guidance and input on that process. Um, I've already identified where I think I'm going to find all that. Um, and over the next um, few weeks, we'll finish that up and then I'll bring back to the boards um, that what that final budget looks like for the board is uh, for the public safety um, departments. Um, the only department I will tell you that I am increasingly concerned about is it's not even a department, it's a division. Um, it is animal control. And I have Doug Benedetto calling me, so I'm going to try to put him on speaker. Um, nope, he's gone. Sorry. Um, as you know, as this board knows, um, that is another division under the, um, under the public safety departments, um, the police department. Um, in 2018, when the taxpayers and voters um, voted to um, appropriate a million dollars for the um, construction of a new animal control facility at the Vogue Road um, site, we immediately went to work um, to get bids for that project and to um, get that thing under construction. And unfortunately, the bids came in um, closer to $2 million. Actually, some of them came in in excess of $2 million. And um, I am now facing um, the dilemma of what do we do about that animal control facility, um, Chief. Um, Baldwin has um, expressed great concern. We're, we're being inspected by um, the state. We're not passing those inspections. Um, you know, there is, um, I have a phone message on my desk from one of the um, advocates for the approval of that project. Um, she's inquiring as to what's going on. Um, so I, I will be working with Chief Baldwin to develop some 
strategies or what we think we must do to move that project forward. Um, and a part of that may include going back to the voters to request another appropriation. Um, of course, I don't want to do that without your input and guidance on that. Um, so um, as we work our way through this over the next um, next few weeks, I will probably be bringing this back to you for some, um, some input. Uh, and I don't know, Chief Baldwin, if there was anything that you wanted to add about that. Uh, you stated it pretty well. The animal control facility, for those um, commissioners who know where it is and who have seen it, have recognized, you know, everybody uh, can recognize that it is in dire need of uh, replacement. Um, it's beyond repair. Um, I'm very uh, fortunate. We've been working with Ray Drew from uh, Public Works. Um, he's been helping us uh, kind of band aid it uh, for the time mm -hmm. being. And helping us with um, city uh, resources uh, to keep that um, um, keep the facility operational, uh, and um, yeah, it, it is a mess. And uh, we definitely need to do something about it. And we need to, uh, you know, come together somehow and, and try to figure out how we're going to uh, address the uh, the issues. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, All right. If there are no questions for me, um, I'm just going to move into item number six, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner McLeod. Second. 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 I heard a lot of seconds. Um, Commissioner <laughs> came clear. All in favor. Aye. 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 You opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you all very much. Stay safe. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Bye bye. Good night.